Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 8th of October. Omar Abdullah to be Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, BJP wins Haryana. Unemployment in Pakistan's Karachi fuels crime wave, desperation derives despair. And India hands over first consignment of emergency relief materials to floodstruck Nepal. And now for all the details. Following the India's Election Commission's data on Tuesday that indicated a substantial lead for the BJP in Haryana, surpassing the Congress, while the Congress, in alliance with the National Conference, delivered a strong performance in Jammu and Kashmir. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Congress and NC alliance was leading at 51 seats, while BJP had an edge in around 28 seats. National Conference Chief and former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Farooq Abdullah said that people have given their mandate in the Assembly polls and that Omar Abdullah will become the next Chief Minister of the Union Territory. Speaking to reporters, Farooq said that his party wants to tackle issues of unemployment, inflation and others. Polls in Jammu and Kashmir holds considerable significance as it is the first to take place since the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019, which conferred special status on Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, as per the reports, in Haryana, BJP was leading in 50 seats, surpassing the majority mark of 46, while the Congress was ahead in 35 seats. Congress candidate and former wrestler Vinesh Pogat emerged victorious in Jolana Assembly constituency as she defeated BJP's candidate Yogesh Kumar. As BJP edged towards a hat-trick in the Haryana Assembly, the Congress has voiced concerns about discrepancies in the vote count data shown by the Election Commission. Though exit polls had predicted Congress's victory in the election, the BJP is poised for a hat-trick win in the Assembly election of the state. This <laughs> हरियाणा के दो करोड़ 80 लाख लोगों ने इस सरकार को चुना है और हम आदरणीय मोदी जी के नेतृत्व के अंदर गति से जूनियर डॉक्टर्स इन इंडियाज कोलकाता सिटी कंटिन्यूड देयर इनडेफिनिट हंगर स्ट्राइक ऑन ट्यूसडे टू डिमांड जस्टिस फॉर अ मेडिक हु वाज रेप्ड एंड किल्ड इन अगस्त डॉक्टर्स फ्रॉम द वेस्ट बंगाल जूनियर डॉक्टर्स फ्रंट व्हिच रिप्रेजेंट्स अबाउट 7000 फिजिशियंस इन द स्टेट announced a full strike on Tuesday after expressing disappointment with the government and the judiciary. The top court in its last hearing had urged the state government to put in place all measures by October 15 to meet the doctor's demands. The doctor's demands include increased police protection in hospitals and an investigation of what they say is corruption in several medical colleges. West Bengal state, ruled by the regional Trinamool Congress party, has been slow to create new tribunals to try sex crimes speedily, according to media reports. After uh, 58 days, uh, we were we are on the same same plot. Uh, nothing, nothing improved or nothing uh, is progressed. We are very worried uh, that the uh, junior doctors uh, who are who are fighting from the very beginning of the uh, movement. Uh, they are on hunger strike. We don't know what will happen to them. The point is justice. It is the most important thing. Now, the government has not been able to do it. And the CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, has been able to do it. After that, the investigation. On the other side, we have to do it. The steps we have taken and the work we have done, we are not satisfied with it. We are not satisfied with it. Moving on, after the death of two Chinese nationals in recent blasts near Pakistan's airport, country's interior minister Mushin Nakvi visited the Chinese embassy in Pakistan and offered condolences. The Chinese embassy has described the incident as terror attack. Nakvi, in a statement, strongly condemned the blast, expressing deep grief and sorrow over the death of two Chinese citizens.
He extended heartfelt condolences to the families of the martyred Chinese citizens and prayed for the swift recovery of the injured. He also vowed that those responsible for this heinous incident will be brought to justice. The separatist militant group Baloch Liberation Army claimed the explosion was an attack carried out by them using a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device targeting Chinese nationals, including engineers. Meanwhile, the escalating unemployment crisis in Pakistan's Karachi city is pushing many into desperate situations with reports of increased theft and robbery as individuals struggle to provide for their families. Our report. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi have expressed their frustration over the rising unemployment crisis, which is leading to a surge in theft and robbery as people struggle to feed their families. They said they are enduring severe hardships with numerous individuals unable to obtain even a single meal each day. The lack of government support has left many feeling abandoned as they express the urgent need for effective solutions to combat unemployment. The Pakistan People's Party has claimed to have made strides in aiding the impoverished, yet many from communities argue that they have not seen the promised support. As the government grapples with its priorities, the voices of the impoverished are growing louder, demanding immediate action to alleviate their suffering. हालात बहुत खराब चल रहे हैं तो इसी हिसाब से महंगाई तो उन लोगों ने किया हुआ है तो कुछ आवाम को रिलीज भी तो मिलना चाहिए ना भाई तो हुकूमत तो कुछ कर नहीं रहा आवाम के बारे में तो मेरा कहना तो यही है कि भाई जब तक ये हालात हैं पाकिस्तान के जो महंगाई है तो इसी हिसाब से नहीं चल सकता ये और दिन ब दिन बढ़ती जाएगी और ज्यादा ही बढ़ता जाएगा क्योंकि नहीं है ना कोई सुविधा यहां पे in the wake of reports of attacks on Hindu minorities in Bangladesh, the U.S. on Monday said it wants to see the rights of the minority communities protected in South Asian nation as Hindus celebrate their largest festival of Durga Puja. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller in a daily news conference said that U.S. wants to see the rights of minorities protected in Bangladesh as also is true all around the world. More than 600 people, including Hindus, were killed during violent protests in Bangladesh, culminating in the ouster of the Sheikh Hasina-led Awami League government. Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus is leading the country and Hasina has taken shelter in India after her ouster. Moving on, the Indian Embassy in Nepal on Monday handed over the first consignment of emergency relief materials, including sleeping bags, blankets and tarpaulin sheets to authorities in flood-struck nation. The 4.2 tons of aid supplies handed over were for families affected by the recent inundation in the Himalayan region. Days of relentless downpours late last month triggered widespread floods and landslides leaving more than 240 people dead across the Himalayan nation. Hundreds of people are facing a shortage of food, safe drinking water and sanitation in Kathmandu following the natural disaster. Market prices have also soared as vegetables coming from India and other districts of the country have been temporarily halted due to obstruction in major highways due to landslides. And just in two decades, under the leadership of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Prime Minister's home state Gujarat has blossomed into a vibrant hub of progress, weaving together innovation in infrastructure, business, agriculture, renewable energy and education. Take a look. In recent years, Gujarat has blossomed into a vibrant hub of progress, weaving together innovation in infrastructure, business, agriculture, renewable energy and education. The state's extensive network of roads, modern airports, 
advanced railway stations and thriving industrial hubs are not just symbols of advancement but testaments to its dynamic evolution. This transformation began in 2001 with Narendra Modi as Chief Minister. His visionary leadership inaugurated the vibrant Gujarat Summit in 2003, a groundbreaking initiative that sparked an industrial renaissance. The summit attracted domestic and international investment, enhancing the ease of doing business in the state by streamlining regulations and dismantling barriers to entrepreneurship. In the past 20 years, this summit has given a new idea to the platform. It has given new investments and returns for new gateways. As a result, Gujarat has experienced a surge in employment opportunities and nurtured a thriving ecosystem for various industries. In 2008, Tata selected Gujarat for its nano plant, benefiting from the state's business-friendly environment. Following Tata Motors' investment in Sanan, several automobile manufacturing plants emerged, including Suzuki Motor Gujarat, Hero Motor Co and Honda Motorcycle. This remarkable journey has positioned Gujarat as a beacon of development and innovation. Industry leaders have hailed this pro-business approach of Gujarat, facilitated by its visionary leadership, coupled with policy reforms. When foreigners think of new India, they think of a new Gujarat, Navu Gujarat. How did this transformation happen? Because of one leader, and he is Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, the most successful Prime Minister in India's history. Gujarat consistently ranks among the top states and union territories for ease of doing business. The Gujarat Single Window Clearance Act 2017 was a key step which has helped expedite processes for issuance of various licenses, clearances and certificates required for setting up a business and to provide an investor-friendly environment in the state. In the financial year 2024, the state attracted a foreign direct investment of 7.3 billion US dollars. In the financial year 2023-24, a jump of 55% over the previous fiscal. This influx has greatly benefited local businesses such as Karnavati Hydraulic in Ahmedabad, which manufactures hydraulic cylinders for various industries. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.